Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today, we are taking a step further down the line of British aircraft carriers. Today, it's the turn of the HMS Hermes, the Tier 5 aircraft carrier. Now, this ship was actually the first ship, or the first aircraft carrier that was purpose-designed, and wasn't converted from, you know, like a cruise ship or something like that. But uh, she wasn't the first aircraft carrier, purpose designed aircraft carrier to be actually built. That goes to the Japanese. So the British did take their sweet time getting this thing finished. Uh, as usual, also, they were going through a, battle, uh, through a bunch of iterations and uh, had the tennis court set up with two islands and a net in between at some point. Um, but uh, gave up on that and ended up with a, uh, well, rather modern looking single island setup and uh, completed that, that aircraft carrier just sometime after, after the First World War. Now, she was involved in the Second World War, and she was actually part of the uh, British Indian Ocean going fleet at the time, because the British were uh, fighting the Japanese. And uh, after the Japanese had pulled Pearl Harbor onto the Americans, the British were under the impression that uh, this was a one-off occurrence and could never happen. Could only happen to uh, uncivilized colonists and never to the Great Empire. So, of course, the Japanese pulled exactly the same trick again on Colombo, and uh, that was mildly embarrassing. Now, uh, Hermes didn't get didn't get damaged there, uh, but actually uh, was actually involved in uh, an operation trying to get uh, trying trying to invade Madagascar. But she was still stationed in what was back then Ceylon and what is today Sri Lanka. And, uh, well, the, the Hermes had a relatively small contingent of aircraft. So one thing that's, that was kind of uh, special is that she didn't have any fighters on board. She had, I think, two squadrons of uh, fairy swordfish torpedo bombers. Or, I mean, swordfish can carry pretty much anything. But not, not necessarily fighters. So... Uh, when they got wind of the fact that uh, the Japanese were about to, well, attack, they sent Hermes away, and uh, the but she uh, in order you know to get her out of the way when the Japanese would be attacking the port, but she was spotted by a spotter plane from the Haruna, and uh, the, since the British were decrypting the Japanese transmissions, they figured out that she was spotted. And, well, effectively, given that she was a carrier without airplanes and w what can only be described as a poor excuse for an anti-aircraft armament, she was ordered straight back into, um, straight back to Ceylon. But uh, she didn't make it in time and she got attacked by Japanese dive bombers and was sunk pretty, pretty comprehensively. The British were so embarrassed about this whole thing that they actually got, an, got a merchant ship and dressed her up to look like the Hermes. Because, uh, you know, <laughs> to fool the axes. Um, yeah, <laughs> all right, we'll take, we'll, we'll take that at face value. But they, uh, the, the British very much learned the hard way that uh, if you are facing the Japanese anywhere around the Indian or Pacific Ocean, you probably should be having fighter cover in the air because AA, or in the case of the Hermes, the absence thereof, really doesn't cover it. So, uh, Tier 5. Uh, one, one, one tier further, after the relatively nasty surprise for me, at least personally, that uh, the British aircraft carriers have a whole lot more torpedo bombers than I'm comfortable with. <laughs> I was hoping for more, for more uh, carpet bombing. But uh, let, let's, uh, let's do a quick comparison between... Um, or let's, have, let's have a quick look at what this ship actually has in terms of loadout before we do a comparison. So uh, she does get the same fairy swordfish torpedo bombers that you get on um, on the Argos at tier four. Uh, they are not really good. And uh, once again, th this week it'll happen. <laughs> I'll talk a little bit more about the fairy swordfish, but I have something else in mind for that. So uh, yeah, you get the same uh, you get the same air group of uh, tw 12, 12 planes all in all, two squadrons to each with the relatively tight torpedo spreads. Uh, she also gets dive bombers, and um, she gets the Blackburn Skewer, uh, not, not named after a big metal stick that you poke things with, but uh, which would have made sense, in my opinion, but named after a bird, which probably also makes sense. So, uh, yeah, 
you get you get some, but because the Herm, uh, the Hermes is such a small ship, you only actually get six of them, which gives us a grand total of eighteen planes on this thing, which isn't an awful lot. So let's uh, for some for some of you others out there who can't intuitively judge how good aircraft are, let's compare her to the Bogue, because that thing is actually not bad. At least when I was playing it, I was having fun in it. So we do now get the carpet bombing uh, skills here, which means that the dive bombers don't drop one bomb, but uh, they drop multiples. And this is not, you know, completely out of the blue. I mean, uh, dive bombers would have, you know, load out oftentimes either like one 500 kilo bomb or two 250 kilo bombs or like a bunch of smaller bomblets uh, on, on under the wings, depending on what you what you were trying to achieve. So comparing her to the Bogue, uh, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, the uh, the hull is, is relatively similar. Uh, she is faster, obviously. I mean, uh, I, I don't think there are many things in uh, in game that are slower than the Bogue. <laughs> even for even for an American capital ship, that is a bit of a record with 16 knots of a max speed. Uh, she is faster with almost 24 knots, and uh, she has better guns. Which, once again, is not necessarily a great achievement. But these aren't actually terrible. So these are uh, side-mounted 140mm main guns. And it, it says a lot about me that the first thing I'm talking about in aircraft care is the main guns. But uh, they, they do come in handy at, at, at times. Uh, they uh, they are not bad. Although, um, for, for, due to their sheer number, <laughs> the 127mm guns on the Bogue are actually better in terms of, well, just general gunness uh, the only advantage that the hermes really has is that she's got more of them like three on each side rather than one <laughs> so uh, other than that they're they're pretty terrible but you know uh, you've you've got six guns on a tier five aircraft carrier this uh, this this can be useful at times um yeah uh, we do get the blackburn skewer which is mm, not great and uh, for two reasons. First of all, we only get six of them instead of the 12 that we get <laughs> with the Dauntlesses on the Bogue. And uh, while they do drop three bombs per plane, they only have a 10% fire chance. Which means that your three bombs per plane are not actually going to be hitting anything well, most of the time. And if they do, you, you ha do not have a great fire chance on these, on these bombs. Uh, the damage is kind of okay, but once again, I mean... Uh, the uh, the Dauntless has only dropped one bomb. It does a lot more damage, obviously, because there's only one of them. So technically, if you manage to get more than one bomb on target, then you can, only, you can actually do a reasonable amount of damage. But yeah, and, uh, the biggest problem here is that you only get six of them. So if you get into a T6 game, you very, very quickly have zero Blackburn Skewers on board, which might be historically, historically more accurate, but um, also very, very inconvenient, because then you effectively reduce to a Tier 4 carrier. <laughs> Because then all you got left is the uh, 12 swordfish. And the swordfish don't have a huge amount of health. The, the torpedoes don't do a huge amount of damage. And um, are generally not as good as what you would get on, say, the bow. Now, they might be useful for someone um, with great skills at aiming their torpedoes. Because you can get, because it's two groups of s slim spread twin fighters, or twin bombers, you get... Uh, you can get a much narrower spread going. So, for example, let's say you're dropping a destroyer and you're crap at it like me. And uh, in an American carrier, you get, well, four torpedoes in the water and have a good chance that you maybe one of them hits. Whereas if you actually know what you're doing uh, in one of these things, you might be able to get more on target, I guess. But that's pretty much all there is to it. Other than that, it's really just more hassle because you've got to manage two squadrons of the buggers, which I am not particularly happy about anyway. They have a shorter range and, you know, they're generally not quite as good. Uh, her AA, as mentioned, um, was more was more like a, a checkbox sort of thing. Like someone mentioned that we should have AA on this thing. So let's stick like a, I don't know what it was, probably a 40 millimeter pom-pom given the time onto that thing and then call it done. I think at some point they replaced them with Vickers machine guns, but uh, don't don't nail me down on that one. Uh, which which is especially annoying if you're playing in a um, tier five game against the Bogue, and the Bogue decides that he wants you dead, which happens you know fairly frequently because there's not an awful lot you can do about it. If the Bogue, if the Bogue decides that you're dead, then you will die halfway through the battle, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it because in tier five. 
nothing has AA, including you. And uh, uh, yeah, the, the bulk dive bombers alone are going to be a really nasty uh, problem to deal with. Uh, the one thing she's got going for her is that she has a slightly better surface detection, which is good. So you can reduce that a little bit and then generally be, well, more sneaky, I guess. A bit, sort of. So, yeah, um, that's that thing. Now, how have I set her up? Uh, please, for, for everybody who's new around here and gets to see this the first time, I am not an experienced carrier player. So please don't don't take my word for it. I'm just, you know, trying to get by. So there's one thing you can do. There, there, there are three things you can do in the first slot. You can get yourself more dive bombers. You can get yourself more fight uh, more torpedo bombers, or you can get everything out quicker. Um, one of them is very stupid. One of them is kind of okay, and the other one's kind of okay as well. So uh, getting yourself more dive bombers is rather rather silly because you would get one more dive bomber at the cost of two torpedo bombers, which means that your net loss is one plane. Why would you want to have less planes on something that has already the lowest plane count per tier? Uh, you could get yourself more torpedo bombers. So you would get two extra swordfish for the cost of one skewer. And um, that's how I started out actually, because uh, more often than not, I did end up getting deplaned, especially in tier six battles. Uh, because, you know, tier 6 stuff actually starts having AA and, you know, then it gets really, really tricky. But at the end of the day, I figured um, if I have very little planes, I might as well throw them at the wall as quickly as possible and get something done. So uh, I ended up using this in the first. There's not there's not a great amount of choices you have on the other ones. I've got the propulsion mod and the steering in here. I would have liked to have concealment mod, but uh, you don't get that yet in tier 5. So that's not a thing. Um, and once again, I, I am not even bothering to put the extra AA ammo in because, well, the AA is, is, is more or less absent anyway. You're not going to shoot anything down with this thing. Maybe one plane or so, but that's it. Uh, so I'm rather going full on concealment. And um, uh, obviously with the uh, dive bomber and torpedo bomber uh, boosts that we can get out of things. The commander is still pretty much the same. Um, I have actually bumped him to, to level 6 because in preparation for the Furious. Uh, also to get the exploit weakness because I think that's a for an aircraft carrier a rather important skill to have So uh, we'll start out with that. But other than that, there's it's the exact same setup like last time uh, You can't get a historical camo on these things because you're in tier 5 historical camos are starting at tier 6 So you may as well. I'm just gonna go with the seaborne assault um, if you are uh, If you've got too much gold or something you can get this one I wouldn't recommend it because it's a, a mid-tier carrier and <laughs> why would you? But uh, it also makes it look rather French, in my opinion. So <laughs> that's that's another thing. Uh, nothing against the French. Great ships there. It's just that this is a British carrier. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> uh, it gives you more hit points, more bomb damage, more torpe uh, torpedo damage, and better surface detection. So, yeah, you know, you could. But I wouldn't, honestly. I would just get this one and be done with it. Because it also gives you better surface detection. Uh, anything else we need to talk about? Not really. Let's get into it. One thing I did have a huge problem with uh, was to actually record battles where I wasn't up against bots. Because the matchmaker recently has been extremely aggressive and uh, not many people, even at, at prime time, are playing an aircraft carrier, apparently, on the Asian server. And uh, especially not a mid-tier aircraft carrier. So unfortunately, uh, oftentimes, uh, I would say 7 out of 10 games that I played were just purely against bots. Which is really annoying because I can't use these as footage. So uh, if there's the occasional bot in here, that's really just a matchmaker. Uh, hopefully something will be d done about this. And uh, yeah, I, I apologize for that, but it is what it is. So um, I think I've played about 20 battles and I've got two games out of that that weren't chock full of bots. So, you know, <laughs> it, it also really, really trains the wrong thing. But anyway, here we are. Uh, we are in a top tier battle. We're up against the Bog, of course. Uh, a double is Ichi... I Ishizuchi, double, triple actually, one of them is a bot so it doesn't count, there's a Kirov in there which we need to watch out for, and there's a uh, V-170, a German destroyer, so uh, let's do this, domination and big on big race. Uh, I, I tend to play these British carriers rather aggressively because, well, they have relatively good concealment and they are reasonably fast, so, you know, this is usually a good reason to not sit back where you are, but actually get yourself into a position uh, that's a little bit closer behind island cover, stuff like that. So uh, we'll put her on full, um, full ahead, I steer towards the island just so I don't forget. <laughs> put her on straight course and then we start getting some air groups out. 
All right, let's uh, uh, let's see what we can find. Um, we'll see where my team is going. Obviously, with the bots being there. Now, uh, if you're like me and you struggle with controlling the torpedo bomber squadrons, one thing you can do, and I'm not doing here quite yet, but one thing you can do is space them out a little bit, such that you only have to aim one at a time and not two. Okay, we've spotted something. Uh, there's the cure. So let's take him under fire. That was a legendary league player, so uh, prime target. Also, that's a top tier cruiser. Let's see if I can actually hit him. Uh, we'll try. He's turning, obviously. And we've already lost a plane somewhere. Okay, I'm gonna try to readjust my planes. Somebody did, um, and yeah, I don't think I'm actually gonna be hitting that. <laughs> Somebody did mention that I should be using the uh, return home button more. And uh, I, I agree, I, I'm trying to, but I have a devil of a time uh, with all the buttons anyway and trying not to hit the return to carrier view button, which is really bad when you're in the middle of trying to aim your torpedo bombers. Okay, V170, very close up. So that's an issue. Uh, and that's a bot Kuma, so he's not going to do an awful lot. And that uh, Chaser might need a little bit of help, plus we're not holding any capture circles. So let's start dive bombing that thing. Two bomb hits, torpedo meh. <laughs> so much for your, for your cluster bombs. Uh, let's see if we can hit him with torpedoes. And it looks like he is... is he stopping? Yes, he is stopping. Now, can I drop from this side of the island? Is he going forward? No, he isn't. Okay, uh, no, no, you go over there. That missed, but maybe I can get him from here. Is he going forward again? Uh, he's being very unsporting. He's not actually holding still. Okay, he is going forward, so now we should be able to drop him. Uh, if I can hit, and yes, that's a torpedo hit on the destroyer. Go me. <laughs> So now he's going to be uh, he's going to be torpedoing the Ichizuchi. <laughs> it's a bot Ichizuchi, and we've got a we've got a, we've got a bomb hit. You see what I mean about the ten percent fire chance, right? If this was a bow, we would have gotten a bomb hit and uh, and a fire, because that thing's got a forty five percent fire chance. But now he's stopped. Um, yeah, this isn't going to work twice. Is he going to go forward again? Uh, well, he doesn't need to because he's dead now. So uh, time to. Uh, do something help out in in a cup because well it looks like we've got two players over at sea so uh, we can help out in a cup a little bit uh, and of course no flooding that would have been too easy and that Kirov seems to be stuck and that Ichizuchi seems to be stuck over there as well so no one's gonna go and capture um, yay we destroyed a thing nice uh, since that Ichizuchi is uh, d deciding to just stay there uh, I mean this is mid tier the <laughs> It, it, you, you you tell me if the bots or the players are the more are the higher danger. Okay, he's going backwards. So um, uh, is he going backwards or is he going forwards? Okay, is he going forwards or is he going backwards? Uh, I was that was the wrong squadron. I realigned. Oh well. <laughs> so uh, I have managed to miss a stationary Ichizuchi with torpedo bombers. <laughs> but the second squad has hit. But you know, as as usual, no floods or anything. The Kirovs come out, um, and. Uh, uh, but he's sailing away from everything, so we are now holding all three capture circles, which is great, which means I can sit here behind my rock. And I've set a fire! Oh, go me! Is he Damaconing this? Is this Damacon on cooldown? I don't know, but let's get the torpedoes bom torpedo bombers out, you never know, maybe we get lucky and get a flood as well. Okay, he's going backwards again. Uh, WASD skills, definitely, uh, definitely um, strong in this one. Uh, I'm spotted. Oh, that's the bulk. Okay, that's fine. I can live with that. Okay, he is going backwards and he's shooting the bot Kuma, so he's not going to take a. Uh, not going to try to dodge my my torpedo bombers. He's going in a circle though, so I do have to adjust that ever so slightly. I'm not sure if the bulk's going after me. I think he's being very sporting about this, and he's not just deleting me halfway through. Yay, flood! Uh, does he have a Damacon? I don't know. Either he doesn't have one or he's not using it, but uh, be my guest, really. I think at this point this is pretty much decided, uh, unless they kill everything and there's a full health of Wyoming over there, so I don't think so. Okay, the Ichi Ichizuchi is dodging torpedoes like a boss, which is going to help me because I have got airdrop. Ah, he's dead anyway. Okay, Kirov, you're next. Um, see if I can hit him. Uh, I, I generally don't go for carrier snipes because, uh, I don't know. It it feels silly because you spend so much time flying around the map trying to hit the carrier, and in, in, in it's a bad habit in, in later tiers anyway. Hey, I've killed I've killed an aircraft. I shot something down. <laughs> well, go go my AA. Okay, the Kirov is once again in a turn, so I'm not sure these are gonna hit. Uh, just maybe. Oh, okay, we've got one. The other one didn't arm, and he is in a full turn, so I am gonna have to. Uh, no, no, go over there. And then we'll drive, drop you from there. That What's might that actually target? work if we're lucky. Let's see. Uh, at this point, um, I want to... Hey, we shot his rudder off. <laughs> it's still my favorite move in these things. Okay, at this point, I'm just going to want to move forward because there's no reason for me to sit target? behind his rock any longer. And I think the Kirov is dead, so 
Uh, at this point, there's really nothing else I can do than hit the enemy, uh, hit the enemy bulk, and um, uh, yeah, well, let's go for it. Uh, no, Akira, ah, Wyoming's gonna kill that thing before my planes even get there. Okay, uh, let's send some, some some bombers out and see if we can sink ourselves an enemy enemy aircraft carrier. Uh, there's a destroyer coming in who's probably gonna get there first, but. Um, Oh well, uh, yeah. Like, don't don't do the carrier snipey thing because in uh, this kind of works in tier five when nobody has AA, but in in something like tier six uh, or seven, it's very very quickly stops working. And we shot his rudder off. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Damacon's still going to be on cooldown, so, uh, off cooldown, so that's not going to be another flood. But um, uh, he's he's going to get away with it and survive. Yeah, don't get into the habit of doing that. It's uh, it's it's not going to work anymore in in higher tiers because there's too much AA. So just just don't. Yeah, and we came out on top in a British aircraft carrier, <laughs> which yeah is uh, by no means uh, down to my skill or anything, which is just down to the fact that this is a tier four game <laughs> or tier five game really. Uh, so yeah, um, mid-tier battles, they're always great fun. As I haven't actually lost an awful lot of planes and I haven't actually been deplaned and I've done a decent amount of damage. I'm reasonably proud of myself and we've got some flooding damage and fire damage and everything, all the good stuff. So uh, I figure, hey, <laughs> maybe we can pull that off again, shall we try? So here we are in the infamous, the glorious, the one and only, <laughs> the Golden Channel Center control map. In um, yet once again a, uh, a tier 5 battle. I'm sorry, I would have liked to show you a tier 6 battle and um, how this thing gets reduced to a uh, six, six, 6 gun light cruiser after half the battle, but I just couldn't get one. I could not get one because all I would ever get was bot battles and I have played a decent amount of games and it was painful and I didn't like it so I stopped doing it. So just uh, take my word for it, uh, even against bots you are going to lose your planes quite quickly in tier 6. Anyway, we are in tier 5, so of course we're up against the Bogue. Uh, what's there? Ajinko, Orion, Kotowski, a Königsberg, an Akasta and a Nicholas. Okay, um, yeah, Akasta is the highest league player there, I think. But uh, we do have some decent players on our side, so hopefully uh, this is not going to be a complete disaster. But it's mid-tier, so, uh, well, <laughs> Golden Channel on mid-tier, you know already what's coming, right? All right. Uh, I am not, because there's an enemy aircraft carrier and I'm right out in the open, I'm not going to start moving forward just yet. But uh, we're going to try and get an early scout on because we do have a Königsberg on our side and hopefully uh, he can take care of the enemy destroyers in the capture circle quite quickly and then we can do some good work here. So um, I'm kind of holding off my second torpedo bomber squadron just a little bit. Uh, such that I don't have to manage them both at the same time. Okay, and we can set the other one out. So they are a bit spaced out, which is uh, which makes it a little bit easier. There should be a destroyer around here somewhere. Let's see if we can spot him. Um, yeah, there's the Acasta. Okay, uh, dive bomber's out. So of course the Acasta now knows that he's being targeted. And um, is he going to run into this? Oh, just oh, didn't give enough lead. No. <laughs> And of course, the bogue is going for the carrier snipe. Why am I not surprised? Uh, shot off one of my main, shot off one of my main guns. Whatever am I going to do? Well, I'm, I'm going to try. Target. Might as well try and uh, harass the Acasta a little bit more. But he is in his fuel smoke, and he hasn't actually stopped because uh, he has. He understands how fuel smokes work. Okay, there's an enemy Königs back up there, getting into the standard uh, defensive position on their side. So let's see if we can harass them a little bit up there. Uh, given that the enemy bulk seems to be uh, determined to do some, uh, to kill me, uh, I might as well at some point start moving forward and get it over with. But uh, uh, let's uh, let's send some torpedo bombers out in where the Königsberg was last spotted, and just to get him respotted. And I uh, think we've managed to chase the Acasta out of the capture circle, so our team should actually be able to cap. Uh, there's the Kotowski as well, and the Arjunko. Okay, plenty of things, uh, none of which have a great amount of AA. So I'm just gonna. I'm just going to drop things in the general direction. And you see these dive bombers are really doing absolutely nothing against destroyers. Uh, because of the relatively low bomb damage, they're not even getting full pens. How did I only get one torpedo hit? There was like 15 ships in that corner. <laughs> Leave it to me to manage to find a gap between them. Uh, okay, I'm going to get myself behind that. Oh, oh dear. Uh, the Nicholas has gone a long way around, but we've got a Congo over there and we've got a cruiser over there. Uh, the Orion is coming the right flank as well, so that should not be a huge problem, right? So Congo, um, and a cruiser. Uh, what is that cruiser? What have we have over there? Um, somebody shoot the destroyer? Cruiser, maybe? What is it? Oh, it's the Omaha. Okay. Why is the Omaha shooting high explosive at destroyers? Oh, well. Uh, let's help out and try and do something about the Nicholas. 
Uh, oh, we did some damage. Not bad, actually. Not bad. Um, I'm not thinking, I don't think this is gonna work. He's maneuvering, of course. That's not enough. We must go over here. And then we'll do this. Uh, okay, I I'm spotted and there's the Acasta. Okay, the Acasta is back. Where, where are all my cruisers? Why is everybody outside the capture circle? Oh, come on, people. Haven't I, haven't I been teaching you anything? Everybody goes and chases the Nicholas, which is good. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, that means now that no one's in the capture circle. Oh well, which means that I can go there. Uh, the Orion, obviously the Congo is, is just keep sailing on, has no interest in actually dealing with the Orion, you know. So let's help out with that thing. Um, and suddenly I'm in an aircraft carrier and I'm the only one in the capture circle and I'm being shot at. Uh, how did this all go so wrong so quickly? And I think the Acasta is seeing me and is getting funny ideas. Okay, it's about time we get into a gunfight with the Orion. <laughs> Because that's what we do around here. Uh, what do we have guns for if we can't use them? Uh, yeah, somebody has has tried and failed miserably to uh, torpedo the Orion, um, and everyone's come out of the capture circle to deal with the Orion, which is nice. But the Orion's very dead. I don't even need to send bombers there. Uh, the Acasta was around here somewhere. Uh, it would have been really lovely if the cruisers had been uh, dealing with that. Meanwhile, the Vogue is still trying to kill me. Uh, there's the Acasta. Okay, let's drop some bombs on this guy. Uh, he seems to be looking my way. And the enemy team's holding the capture circle, and I'm the only one on my team who tries to do anything about it. You know, in an aircraft carrier, nevertheless. And um, that means we are going to try to torpedo bomb the Acasta. This isn't going to work. I'm going to have to start moving. Am I not? Okay. I'll just go moving. <laughs> Can't stay here, otherwise the Acasta is just going to kill me. Actually, I probably should have been starting to move a little bit ago. Of course, the dive bomber I've all missed. As they usually want to do, and uh, okay, it's it's a low health cast. He doesn't run into the torpedoes. Königsberg, one shot with AP will delete this thing, maybe? No. Okay, the Königsberg tried to torpedo the Acasta, which failed, and then tried to kill the Acasta with uh, with a high explosive, which also failed. So now uh, I'm, I've got my rudder shot off, and I'm down to 1800 hit points, which means the other enemy Königsberg, oh, he's dead as well, because he's going to run into all these torpedoes trying to, trying to kill me, so we may as well just uh, dunk the rest of our planes onto the Agincourt while we're still alive and capable of doing so. He's moving that way, so blah. <laughs> that was that. But, um, well, um, it would have been really great if my team had been, uh, you know, trying at least to to do something something sensible over here and um, uh, you know uh, pay attention to what the uh, what 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 the rest is doing like the congo i don't know where the congo went oh the congo is coming back uh, and we we have the capture circle again so i'll take that back um, go team <laughs> it only took the sacrifice of one lonely aircraft carrier to uh, to get into the capture circle and get this done the ajiko is dead uh, there's a lonely Kotrovsky out there and the enemy Boke. I know where he is. He's behind the island up there, uh, north east, north northwesterly. So uh, that, that's the thing. And uh, I don't think there's enough time for anybody to actually deal with uh, with the Boke. So that battle is over and uh, well done, team. Uh, we haven't survived for very long, but uh, <laughs> it was entertaining, I guess. <laughs> At the very least. Anyway. Um, yeah, is this, a, is this a great carrier? I don't know. I mean, I'm, you're asking the wrong person here. Uh, personally, I think this is a very difficult carrier to play because you do have uh, three squadrons to manage and uh, you have very few planes and uh, it is... It seems to me not an easy line to play, which is great because, that, <laughs> of course, that's the one I picked up in order to start with carriers again. But... Um, We'll have to see with the Furious at tier 6 if that thing's any better, but uh, uh, I'm, I'm not hugely convinced of this of this carrier, especially for somebody who is not very, very good at um, at aiming their torpedoes. Just, you know, the, f the fire chance is too low on these bombs. Uh, oftentimes you just get one or two hits, and then the 10% fire chance compared to the 45% fire chance on a Bogue really, really makes a difference. Uh, not an easy thing to play. And not an easy ship to do to do well in, in my opinion. So, uh, well, there you go. Uh, next week I'll be trying out the Furious, and we'll, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> and then, well, I am honestly trying to play carriers a bit more and uh, give you some more carrier content on the channel as well with me at the helm. It's going to be entertaining either way because either at some point I figure out how to do this properly, or I fail miserably, and then you get to see that. But anyway, that's it for today. Thanks everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.